welcome back to the channel another grim dawn video for you i'm going to quickly run through some of the things that grim dawn doesn't tell you and there are quite a lot of these we'll start by looking at the interface there are various buttons you can click here's one this is the faction window factions are the good and the bad groups good groups you can join bad groups you can fight against here's a list of things in the game guide so the game does tell you some stuff it's in the game guide but no one reads it so technically Grim Dawn doesn't tell you anything there are quests that you've completed and quests that you have yet to complete that's what we're looking at now and there's a list of the shrines that you've activated in the current difficulty so that says I've completed 39 out of 55 shrines restored 39 out of 55 um, but only a few in elite yeah, ignore the fact that I've just got green gear. It's a green gear challenge build, so I haven't got other stuff. What I'm showing you here is the fact that you've got two rows of buttons, and you can swap between them. And something the game doesn't tell you is if you want to travel around, you can click on Rift. Not that you, you don't need to put your own rift down, you just open the map and click on any rift and you'll go to it, but you will leave a rift behind. So when I do it from here, and I travel back to Devil's Crossing, what it's done is it's, it's left a personal rift where I've teleported from. There it is on the map, you can see it, yay. And I can go back to that to demonstrate. There it is, right next to the permanent one. So you don't need to use L or whatever to put your own rift down, just open the map, click wherever you want to go and it'll drop a rift where you departed. There's the achievements. If you're in Steam you get these as well, but the game re retains all the information about achievements you've got. There you go, it's the loot filter. You can see I'm only looking at green items, because this character is doing a green item challenge. I wouldn't recommend it. Well, I would. I'd recommend it. I'd actually recommend doing the no gear challenge. See if you can see if you can last more than five minutes in veteran difficulty. You can click that button on the end. And what that gives you is either no mini map or a little mini map or a big mini map. Grim Dawn will display a clock showing the time of day. There's a clock icon there. It doesn't look like a clock. It looks like a little dot, but it's a clock icon. If you click on it, the clock stays there. If you click on it again clock disappears. Is it useful? Well, no, but the game doesn't tell you about it so I have to. You can rotate the screen by holding the mouse button down or using the full stop and comma keys. Lots and lots of pro gamers do this in their videos and it makes a lot of people feel sick watching. So keep doing it, it's really good and people like to throw up. If you hit the number key 2 it restores the default view, which puts the compass pointing back towards north and the default zoom is reapplied. There you go. So if you don't want to be zoomed in, you've got to zoom back out again. Fair play, Grim Dawn tries to tell you about toggle skills, but it only mentions them in passing on the skill screen. This skill must be toggled to maintain its effect. It doesn't tell you how to do that. What you've got to do is you've got to put points into the skill, manually add the skill into a toolbar, and then activate it. And then it appears, like you can see there, above your health bar, and there's the other one. Those are toggle skills they've been toggled on. Yeah, because the game doesn't tell you that, what it's possible to do, and what I'm sure a lot of people have done, I personally have done this in the past, when I was a new player. I put points into the skill, read the thing that said it had to be toggled on, and thought, yeah, I've done that, I've put points into it. Because the game doesn't tell you that that's not right. We go back to talking about faction vendors again. If you hover over that button there, you can see the faction bonus, 8%. 8% cheaper prices for anybody who wants to buy stuff from the faction vendor or the shopkeepers who are part of that faction. This guy here is someone you can rescue and he becomes part of that faction. You get the 8% discount from him as well. I've got a whole video about searching stuff in shops. You, you can put any kind of search string in. As long as it's mentioned somewhere in the text, the tooltip of the item, it will be highlighted in the vendor's window. And what you can do on the buyback screen is you can, you can put your stuff in there. You've technically sold it to him. 
but when you buy it back you buy it back for the same price if you notice the amount of money I've got I sell him something and buy it straight back I get the money back so you can put yours like kind of save time if you don't want to go back to the stash guy if you're near a shop you can just dump stuff in the buyback window see if it's see if it's got the search string you want because you're too lazy to manually go through every single panel of your inventory looking for items i'm not no it's not laziness is it it's quality of life i'm not doing very well with devil's crossing i'm only respected probably yeah they don't like me very much because i'm not using writs or mandates i'll talk about them without showing you them make it even more confusing if you're playing a new character and you haven't got any other characters that have got revered reputation buy a writ when you get to honored and you apply it to yourself you use it as a consumable it's a consumable item the game doesn't tell you this you consume the writ and you get plus 50 percent reputation the mandates are confusing the first time you play because it gives 150 percent reputation bonus but you can only buy it when you're revered at which point you can't raise the reputation any higher so what you do is you buy a mandate on a character that's revered put it in your shared stash and then when you start a new character you instantly consume that 150 percent plus reputation booster the mandate and you get reputation a heck of a lot quicker so none of that made any sense good luck and once again the game doesn't tell you and I just did and you probably still didn't understand it so good luck with that use the writs on a new character once you've got that character to revered buy a mandate stick it in shared stash use the mandates on your alts or whatever you want to call them just don't call them tunes if you call them tunes I'll, I'll shoot you in the face with an acid revolver